Hey, Kyle here for School of Motion. If you want to animate your Photoshop designs in After Effects, getting them imported correctly is a crucial step for success. Today, I'll be showing you the different ways you can import these files and giving you a few helpful workflow tips to make everything go smoothly. Let's get started. The techniques we'll be covering should work on pretty much any Photoshop file made in the last couple versions, but if you'd like to follow along, you can download my example file for free. Just follow the link in the description. After Effects is an application with a lot of options, which means you might have several different ways to approach something, and which one is best may depend on what you're doing. So we'll be exploring different methods you can use to bring your layered Photoshop file into After Effects, and why you might choose different ones at different times. Now, I should say that having a properly structured Photoshop file is really important here. There are some features that transfer over better than others, and the way you might structure your files for design is often very different than the way you might want them structured if you'll be animating. Make sure to also check out this other tutorial to learn the best ways to prep your Photoshop files before bringing them into After Effects. Remember how I said that After Effects has a lot of options? Well, there are several different ways to even just import a file. They all pretty much do the same thing, but I'll just quickly run through them, and you're free to use whichever one you like. You can come up to File, Import, File, which you can see has a shortcut of Control or Command I. Or if you have several things to import, you can choose multiple files right here. I just have one, so I'll choose this. I'll grab my file right here and click Import. And I'm just going to hit OK right now. I'll talk more about this pop-up in just a minute. Here in the project panel, which is this one over here, I can right click in an empty area, choose import, and now we've got that same option. I can also double click anywhere in this empty area to import files. I'll just cancel that. If you're in a new project like this one without any compositions created yet, you'll see these two buttons here in your composition viewer. If I click new composition from footage, I can select some footage, in this case my Photoshop file, from which After Effects will create a new composition. If your file is in a CC library, you can find it, right click and choose Add to Project, or just drag it over to your project panel. Or you can even drag it straight into an existing composition if you have one. Lastly, you can just drag the file in directly from your file browser. I obviously don't need all these copies of my file right now, so I'm just going to delete all of these and start fresh. So I'll begin the import process again and select my file. Here in this Explorer window, I already have a few choices. This is not an image sequence, so I'd want to make sure that's unchecked if it were available. You may have noticed there's an Import As drop-down menu here. I'm just going to ignore that. This menu is actually redundant, because no matter which one I choose here, it's about to give us another pop-up with the same options. So, Import. Here's the pop-up that we do care about. When you import a layered Photoshop file, After Effects wants you to confirm how you want to bring it in. We have three different options here. I'm going to start by choosing Footage. So if I do this, no matter how it's built in Photoshop, this is going to import as one single flattened image file. You'll see it's added to my project panel here. Since it's selected, you can see a thumbnail, the file name, and it tells me that it's 1080 by 1080. But I can't do anything with it yet because it's just hanging out in my project panel. I'll need to either create a composition and add my file to it, or the easier thing is to create a composition from this footage. I bet you know where to go for that. I can just drag it onto that button, or the same feature exists right down here, this little composition icon at the bottom of your project panel. So now we have a composition that was created with exactly the same specs as this image. If a single flattened image is all you need, then great, but we don't really have a lot of options here beyond just moving this single image around. That said, this image is linked, so if I come back to Photoshop and make a change, like adding a layer with this beautiful design on top, save it, and then I flip back to After Effects, you'll see that it updates immediately. So if this is all you need, easy, right? But we do have several different elements in our design, and our Photoshop file has several layers, so we'd probably like a little more control. Let's go ahead and delete this and start over using one of the different methods to import all the separate layers that exist in this document. So I'll grab my file again, click Import, and this time I'm going to choose Composition Retain Layer Sizes. We have another option for whether we want to keep Photoshop layer styles editable or merge them into the footage. This is up to you and how much control you need, and there are a few special cases where you might need to merge them to make things look exactly the same, but I usually like to leave these editable, so I'll hit OK. Here in the project panel, it's created a composition for me, which is basically After Effects' interpretation of my Photoshop file, and then it also creates a folder with all the layers and groups that I built into that file. 
Again, you'll see that this composition pulled the dimensions from my file, 1080 by 1080, and here it has a duration and a frame rate for this composition. Since all these layers are just still images right now, After Effects generates that duration and frame rate from however you set the last composition you created. I'll double click this composition to open it in my timeline, and now we can take a closer look at what we have. Just in case your After Effects looks different than mine, you might notice that I'm on the default workspace, which you can click on right here in your workspace bar, or you can find it under Window, Workspace, Default. If you're new to After Effects, it can seem a little overwhelming at first, but it's not all that different if you think of it like Photoshop plus time. Up here we have a viewer where you see what you're working on. I already pointed out the project panel, which basically holds all the images, footage, or audio elements that you plan to use in your project. Down here is our timeline, which I'll get to in just a second, and then there's a bunch of other panels that you don't need to worry about yet. The layer structure here in the After Effects timeline is the same as it was in my Photoshop file. You can see all the individual layers, and then, well in Photoshop these are groups, and they look like folders. You can add masks, blending modes, or layer styles. They're pretty useful for more than just organization, right? In After Effects, these are called pre-compositions, and while they have a lot of the same features, they can do other things too. For now, you can just think of them like a folder that holds a group of elements so I could move them all as one unit. You'll notice some guides were also imported as part of this document. I created those in Photoshop and they came right over, which can be really handy. I don't really need to see them right now though, so I'll just shut those off up here in the View menu, or by pressing Ctrl or Command, semicolon. I see that my vignette didn't translate perfectly, and that happens with a few features. In this case, it's something that's easily fixable by just adjusting one feathering property. You'll find there are times you'll have to tweak or rebuild a few things, depending on how you need to animate them. Sometimes that's just part of the process. Again, if you'd like to know more about the proper ways to prepare your Photoshop files before bringing them into After Effects, and to get a better idea of what features will transfer over and which won't, make sure to check out that other tutorial I mentioned before. Something else really handy that we get by having access to all of these layers is that we can animate or even edit Photoshop text layers directly here in After Effects. I'll double click this IG bar to open up that pre-composition and you'll see, just like in the Photoshop group, we have this little box, the logo, and this thing that says at Joey K Guitars. That's my text layer, but it's not editable yet. If you look closely, you'll see that these are all labeled as Photoshop files by the little icons next to their names. But since this was a text layer, we have some extra functionality available. I'll select that and go to Layer, Create, Convert to Editable Text. You'll notice the icon changed, and now this is a native After Effects text layer, which means we can change it or we can animate it using After Effects text animators. Let's close this and hop back to our main composition. Since we chose to import at layer size, that means every layer is going to have its own bounding box, and they'll all be different sizes depending on how big that original element is. If I select this texture layer, for example, let's zoom out a bit using the scroll wheel or control or command with plus minus. And then you'll see this lavender box here around my layer. If I want, I could grab this layer in the viewer, move it around, and I could start animating this. You may have noticed these other rectangles because a lot of my Photoshop layers extend past the edges of my canvas. This is really helpful when animating because, like in the case of this texture, I have a lot of extra material to work with, and that gives me a lot of flexibility in animation. There is one very important thing I need to point out about the way After Effects interprets this though. It establishes this bounding box based on what's actually visible on this layer in Photoshop. Take this layer with the guitars for example. I'll solo that by clicking this little button over here. You can see here in the viewer there's kind of a weird edge on this layer. And if I flip back to Photoshop you'll see why. I used a layer mask to trim off some other stuff in that image that it was going to be in the way of all my type. So I've disabled this layer mask now. I've changed what portion of this layer quote unquote exists, right? If I save and flip back to After Effects, you're going to see something strange happen. It moved. So this is kind of the double-edged sword of importing at layer size. It gives you all these individual bounding boxes and it gives you all this great flexibility. But if you change something in your Photoshop document that affects the boundaries of that layer, it might change the way it looks in After Effects. So that's something you need to keep in mind. I'll just flip back to Photoshop and re-enable that and it will go right back where it's supposed to be. Without getting too into the weeds here, let me quickly explain what's happening. If I click on this layer, you'll see it has this little crosshair right in the center. This is the layer's anchor point, and by default it's placed in the center of the layer, calculated by the layer's bounding box, or its dimensions. All the other transform properties, like position, scale, and rotation, are relative to that anchor point. This is the point around which layers scale, around which they rotate, 
and the layer's position is actually the position of this anchor point in the composition space. So if you change what portion of a layer actually quote unquote exists in Photoshop, it changes the boundaries of that layer, right? The anchor point actually stays in the same position in your composition, but the boundaries of the layer or image, and so what After Effects calculates that anchor point to be, have changed. This isn't good or bad, it's just something you need to understand so that you know what to expect. This is especially important if you find you need to make this kind of change after you've already started animating. If you do find you need to change a layer's anchor point, there are two ways to do it. You can twirl this open and scrub the anchor point values here, which keeps the anchor point in the same position, but it makes it look like the layer is moving. Or you can use this anchor point tool up here in the toolbar, which you can also get by pressing Y. This allows you to free drag the anchor point, which is technically changing its position values as well, but it keeps the layer in the same place visually. Got all of that? All right, great. Let's delete all of this and start over using one more import method. This time I'm going to choose Import Composition. I wish this said Composition Document Size because that's what it is. Again, you'll have editable layer styles or you can merge them into the footage, and I'll hit OK. Just like before, it creates a composition and it gives us all the layers. However, the big difference this time is that all the layers are cropped exactly to the boundaries of this document. So this texture, for example, does not exist past the edges of the canvas anymore. This gives you a lot fewer options in After Effects because, you know, things are cut off at the edges. But that may be okay for certain designs. Also, the anchor point of every single layer is placed in the very middle of the composition, which maybe isn't the easiest way to animate, but you do know how to change those anchor points now, right? One thing it does do though, if I come back to Photoshop and again disable this layer mask, if I flip back to After Effects, now we can see the other parts of that layer, but it didn't move this time, because this layer is still getting its dimensions from the Photoshop document, not from its own layer size. So you may find times where this is actually a better way to work, as long as you design with this functionality in mind. Before we finish up the rest of these tips, I want to let you know about our After Effects Kickstart course. It's a comprehensive, interactive course that will get you really comfortable working in After Effects in just a handful of weeks, whether you're brand new or even if you've got a bit of experience but you've realized you don't have a solid foundation. So you should be covered for actually getting your Photoshop designs into After Effects, but what if you do need to make a significant change to something or even add a layer after you've already imported your design? While the files are linked, as you saw, that connection has some things it won't recognize automatically. I want to start out by pointing out something over here in the project panel that might help you understand the way After Effects thinks about these files. So if you look at these layers here, you'll see it has a layer name and then the file name. And if I maximize this panel using the tilde key, you'll see it also has a full path to this file on my hard drive. If you think of this file path like the file's street address, you could think of this over here like its apartment number. To After Effects, these work much like links to separate files on your hard drive, so if you move or change something about them, After Effects might get confused. Fortunately, this connection is smart enough to recognize when you've simply renamed an existing layer and usually it will update itself. If you delete a layer from your Photoshop file, After Effects will show that as missing footage because now it can't find anything at the exact address it's looking for. But if you change your grouping structure, or if you add a new layer into your Photoshop file, After Effects doesn't know because it doesn't really realize that change exists. It understands changes to layers it's already aware of, but it only sees the actual structure as it was when you imported the file. Of course, you could always just import some separate file and place it correctly here in After Effects, but that can be a little messy and it gives you an extra file to keep track of. Let's say I've added this little guitar head icon to my logo. So now there's a new layer in my Photoshop file, which didn't exist when we first imported this into After Effects. There's actually one more option that we skipped in that import pop-up. If you choose to import as footage, down here you can choose Layer, and you can actually just select one specific layer to import. Again, you'll have options for layer styles and how you want to determine the dimensions, the layer or the document. If I hit OK, now it imported just that one layer as its own single element. So we got it into the project, but all it does is just import the layer, meaning you'll still have to bring it into your composition manually, get it into the proper place in the layer stack, and adjust the placement manually. This gets the job done, but it might not be very precise. I do have a trick for this though. When I'm importing a layered file, I always like to also import a second copy of that same file as flattened footage, or depending on your project, maybe a JPEG or PNG that I exported directly from Photoshop. 
If I place this flattened version of my artwork as the very top layer of my composition, now I can use it as a reference to remind myself of the original look and positioning once I've started animating. With that layer selected, I'll come up to Layer and choose Guide Layer. It gets this fancy little icon added down here in the timeline, and this means that even if you leave this turned on, After Effects won't render this when you export your animation. So toggling this on and off as a visual reference is helpful, but I can take this even further. I'll make sure my Modes column is visible. If you see switches instead, you can click down here or hit the F4 key to toggle between these. And then if I set this layer's blending mode to Difference, it gives you this great utility view where anything that's exactly the same is pure black, and anything that's different is shown as white. Now I can use this to help position a single element perfectly, or I can always come back to this if I've accidentally moved a layer away from its original position. Okay, one more idea. This one's a little messy, but it's good for when you have a new layer that you really need to get in exactly the right spot, or if you have a couple new layers to add. I can just import my whole file again, as a composition, and choose dimensions the same way you did it before. You'll see it creates another copy of the composition with the same name, and just adds a number 2 after it. I'll open up this second version, find my new element, and Ctrl or Command C to copy it. Then I'll close this duplicate composition, make sure I'm in the correct one, select the layer I want this to sit above, and then Ctrl or Command V to paste. Presto! So this does leave me with some extra stuff here in my project panel. I'll take a second and delete this extra copy of the composition, and I could manually find the new layer in here and pull it out, or you could come up to File, Dependencies, Consolidate All Footage. That command will magically disappear any extra file duplicates in your project, though you may need to take a second and reorganize things depending on how it was built. You know, all this talk of changes has me feeling really indecisive. What if we've already imported a flattened file, maybe even done some really cool animation with it, but then I decide, you know what, I do need access to all those layers. I can actually right-click on the file here in my project panel and choose Replace Footage with Layered Comp. And boom, it creates a composition, it imports all the layers, down in my timeline it changed from a flattened Photoshop file to a composition, and if I double-click that to open it, You'll see it imported everything at the individual layer sizes, just like I showed you earlier. Pretty cool, right? Throughout this tutorial, I've been flipping back and forth between Photoshop and After Effects a lot, but if I didn't already have Photoshop open, I can easily do that from any of these layers here in the project panel or even in my timeline. If I select one of these and use the Edit Original command, which you can find here in the Edit menu, Edit Original, or by pressing Ctrl or Command E. Now it will open that application and open that document. You can make changes, and once you save, it will immediately update in After Effects. I hope this helps you with smoothly importing and working with your Photoshop designs in After Effects, and gives you some good workflow options if you do need to make changes along the way. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for even more design and animation tips. Head to schoolofmotion.com to learn more about our interactive online curriculum, and let our team know if you have any questions at all. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.